Bye everyone. Just getting myself organized. So we'll just wait a few minutes to see if we have a few people pop in while I get my iPad ready for comments. While you're waiting, if anyone feels like doing a little bit of shopping, the very generous Natalie May has given us a 10% discount code to um, come visit her shop. Just remembering how I did this from this morning. Tasmanian government is working to create a safe and inclusive Tasmania for people with. Hi, Jolyn. How are you? Got my iPad working. Hi, Cressida. I think we are doing it online instead of at Bev's. <laughs> Just going to straighten up the camera. Please excuse me if that makes anyone feel ill. It's got a funny angle. See all my snacks next to me. Oops. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit. Right. Let's try and get the whole frame in. Hi Heather. Hi Wendy. <sighs> I think I'm organised. Managed to get the kids off for their sleepover. Managed to throw down dinner. Hi Margaret. So, for those of you who've never done a class with me before, um, I um, tend to go with the flow a little bit, but I'm more than happy if you have got any questions and want to see anything or have got any questions about anything, just please ask and I will let you know. No sound yet. Oh, that's good. Chris, that, has anyone else got sound? Hopefully it's not just my end. I've got my iPad mute, so I have no idea. Phew. <laughs> I wasn't I wasn't talking for a little bit, Jolly, when I was um, trying to get the um, iPad working. I will try turning up my speaker. Hang on. <laughs> Hear me clearly? Oh, good. Excellent. Sorry, that was me fixing up the speaker. I've turned it up to the top. I don't know if that makes a difference or not. Phew, phew. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Welcome, everybody. I know we're going to have lots more people popping in on the way. And for those of you who are watching this um, after the fact, um, welcome. Uh, this will be up indefinitely on my channel. So you can come and stop and find out what we're doing at any stage for those of you who are popping in on my page here the very generous natalie may scrapbooking has given us a 10 percent off discount code it's once only use um so need 15k at nataliemay.com.au um she has a huge range of mixed media goodies a lot of the stuff i'm using today she will have in her shop so you know if if you need to have an enabler uh, there you go but um, I know she does ship elsewhere as well so um, just write and check it out she's 
very, very generous with her time and her postage and everything. So uh, you can always check it out and see what you can do. But thank you very much, Natalie, for that. Um, please remind me at the end too to get that out again. I will pop it off to the side because while I'm working, um, I'll, I'll lose it. So. <laughs> um, today we are just going to talk about what art journaling is and go through basically what I do when I need to work on automatic. So things that, um, the, the, I could say the rules for art journaling, but as I said in my little blurby thing, there are no rules for art journaling. It is what you, you need to do. Um, but they, there's this kind of sequence. If I'm, I don't want to think about things or if I'm stuck, these are the sorts of things that I do to get a page going. So hopefully we'll get one full page, but I'm going to show you a background um, of two different ways. We're also going to have a little bit of a go at doing some hand lettering because that's another question I get asked a lot on my um, journaling channel. And maybe if we've got time, um, do some drawing as well. So we'll see what we can fit in. Uh, feel free to play along as I go along or you may like to um, watch and then try again later. As I said, you can access this at any stage. Hello, all those lovely people joining in. I'm not ignoring you. I'm just trying to get everything out of my brain, <laughs> first of all, so I apologize for that. Um, I know a lot of you have joined up the Mixed Media Creative Queens page on Facebook. If you have done that and look under the file section, you will find two files that I've put in for this class. Now, you don't necessarily need them for the class at all but they are just two documents I thought they'd be handy to have as little go-to's so the first one is this is how I tend to do my handwriting sort of a step-by-step -step way of how I do it um, and how to do background writing um, it's just one way to do it there's lots of different ways you know it's all good the other one is just generally what um, I think about art journaling. I've got what is art journaling, why should you do? And this one, which I love. Um, I know what you're going to say next. I'm not an artist. I used to say it too. I have started to call myself an artist. I still think I'm being, excuse the Australianism, a bit wanky when I say that. Um, but, you know, we, we use art supplies and we create art. So that's what it is. Um, what does an art journal look like? Um, why work in a book? And this is a big one. A lot of people say, you know, why don't you work loose? Why do you always work in a book? And for me, I try and journal every night. I use it for three reasons. One is to practice my art making, um, just to have fun. And the other thing is for my mental health, for my mental health regulation, um, just to keep me sort of centered. Um, with creating that amount of art, if I had it in loose pieces of papers, I would be drowning in it and for those people who follow me on Instagram you've already seen what my studio looks like um I don't need any more junk around here not that it's junk but you know what I mean so I've got it in if I've got it in books um I can put it on my shelf I can pull them out at any stage I want and um put them back in <laughs> oh dear Marilyn you can tell him he's the same back um what do you need to get started most of us are coming from a scrapbooking card making paper making toll painting background most of us have got paint scissors color pencils whatever you've got that's what mixed media is is just using all that stuff so there's no i say this take this with a grain of salt there's no one thing that you have to buy um coming from someone who over the last month has spent a lot on art supplies <laughs> i'm not good at taking my own advice um but you know start with what you've got you can always add what you like later on, but I would always suggest having go with what you've got. If you like it, then you can maybe go into something different. Hi, everyone coming in. Um, I've got my favourite go-to supplies. Now, please, when you're reading this, this is my favourite. You might rightly or wrongly agree with this list. Um, there's no right or wrong. This is just a group that I like. The stuff that I tend to use in every journal page. So obviously journals, um, those people who follow my um, channel, I use them journals from Range of Ink, they just suit me. The size is a particularly good size for me and I like the different backgrounds. 
um, the Stabilo Ore Pencil, um, Posca Paint Pens. <laughs> Sorry, Melinda. Yes, the Posca Paint Pens are very good. Um, neon Coloured Paints. So you can get all sorts. I really love this one. It's a bit more expensive than the, the other ones, but, you know, Dilution's got great neon paints. Neon paints are basically neon paints. Um, these ones are slightly creamier and slightly more opaque than other neon paints, even though by nature they're all translucent. This one's just that slight bit thicker, so I um, might have to crack those out today. Uh, gesso black and white. I don't gesso many of my surfaces, but it's just handy as a big tub of cheap white paint. Gel medium, I go through bucket loads of that. Collage papers, ephemera, gel printed things. You know, anything you can scratch from a magazine. Um, an old vintage bookshop, you know, dollar sales. Go to your tip shop, find some books there. Anything you can find. Watercolour paints. Uh, they're... <laughs> Super April. <laughs> um, yes, so watercolor paints I don't use very often. I've been using them a little bit more in the recently, um, and I'll talk about that in a minute. Stamps, every kind. I'm a stamper at heart. That's where I began when I was 12 years old. I found stamping through embossing. It was just magic, and I've been addicted to stamps ever since. So that's a little while ago now. And inks. And when I talk about inks, I'm talking about the spray inks. Um, stamping inks, acrylic inks, all sorts of things. So that's my list of top 10. Um, you may have your own list of top 10s and I'm sure if you look at different art journalists, you know, their range would differ in lots of different ways. Do you use more gel than liquid media? Not sure what you mean, Melinda. Do you mean do I use more gel medium than like liquid glue usually when i'm doing collage i would if i'm only gluing down little bits i'd use my glue but most times i use my gel medium thick and running now um just find it i left it out for the class where have i put it <laughs> we're off to a good start i've lost my gel medium this is the one i use have to open a new one because I can't find the one I was using earlier on today. So I use a um, Dina Wakeley gel medium. I know lots of people have got lots of different ones. It holds a peak but it is quite, it's very very spreadable. So it kind of melts between your fingers and rubs away. Um, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a thicker gel, but you can also get the a super thick gel, which is this one, which is much thicker. So this one won't rub away like water. You know. why, why would you use um, paint brushes and so on when you can use your fingers? <laughs> Okay, um, for those of you who are watching along, please ask questions. I attempt, I've got my iPad right in front of me so I can follow the comments. I will try and look up regularly and do it. Um, the last bit of this little document is how I start an art journal page. This is what we're going to be working through today in some way or form. And at the end, I say, you know, these are the steps I do, but you don't have to do them in order. So as I said before, there are no rules to how you do art journaling. These are just guidelines. These are the ones that I've kind of got in my brain as a bit of a skeleton to do a page when I, I don't have a clear idea in my head. I'll just start off with, oh, you know, I'll stick some collage down. Oh, I'll put some paint on top of that. Oh, you know, I'll put some stamping on top of that. So these are kind of um, my go-to steps that I don't need to think about because I've done them so often. Um, they, they're they not hard and fast. And you'll notice if you sort of look at this um, list of steps that I have and then go back and watch some of my other videos and um, how you know sometimes I'll follow them rigidly and sometimes I'll go from here up to step seven so it's just an idea oh thank you Pamela <laughs> oh new art supplies while arrived well excellent 
good job. So just before we dig into what we are going to be sort of doing today, we're going to be doing a page similar to this. I'll be showing you how to do the background. I was quite surprised by how not dull this was, but it's not quite as rainbowy as um, I usually do, but it's got lots of different elements in it. And I'm going to be showing you how to do this background too that I've painted this figure over. So just sort of this, they started off the same way and ended up completely different. So I want to show you how um, you can do that. Um, but before we really jump into it, I just want to show you, because um, this is sort of showing the beginnings of um, art journaling, I want to show you where I began. So these pages, they are um, scans of um, pages I did a long time ago. So these were actually done in 2000, 2000 2001. So over 20 years ago now. Um, it was when I was doing a lot with dye ink and stamping inks because we didn't have all the sprays and so on. So for those people who are old enough to remember the old Adirondack um, inks that Tim used to make, um, that's what it is. And you can see all my stamping in the background. So these are all stamps in the background with the dye inks underneath to colour it. And then images cut out of um, calendars. So again with this one, I've aged up the background, used some stamps in the background, this lay stamp at the top, used a bit of pattern paper, and then got this beautiful um, picture again. Most of my pictures like this were coming from calendars, which you can buy really, really cheaply when they're out of season. Um, and some of them got gorgeous, gorgeous images in it. And the good thing for art journaling is they're quite large images, so you can use them as really good focal points. So again, you know, I'd sort of look at the image and think, Asian-y type images. So I had these beautiful paisley stamps and, and did that with those. So really, really simple. Looking at the focal image, I had a background, some collage on it, and then some text on it because I, I really love text. Out of focus. Yes, they are slightly out of focus because they're scans of, um, the scans and the resolution of them aren't brilliant. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, this one, again, the, the angel stamp. This one's actually a stamp from a long time ago. Um, and then just the stamping in the background. But it really sums up. I can look at these pages and remember how I was feeling on the day. And that's the one thing I really love about art journaling is that just by looking at the pages, you can sort of really think about how you're feeling. And it might just be the colours that you've used or the actual imagery or words you've written on it. So that's where I started 20 years ago with my art journaling. So I just wanted to sort of show you the beginning and it can be really, really simple going through um, to, to more complicated. So we're ready to dive in boys and girls. Let me know in the comments if you're following along or if you're just watching today. Um, the handouts, um, in, if you go to the Mixed Media Creative Queens on Facebook, if you search up Mixed Media Creative Queens and ask to join the group, um, I will add you in after this. Sorry, I can't add people in while I'm, I'm doing this. My phone will cut out and do all sorts of weird, wonderful things. Um, and then you've got access to those handouts. Brent, Brent um, please apologise if I... I'm not sure. Um, Heather, I'm really sorry, but on my my screen, it's um, really clear. Is anyone else having problems with focus? Because on my iPad, it's coming through and it's nice and crisp and clear. Pamela, is that it's clear there? Yep. Focus is fine. Yep. Sorry, um, whoever that is. Um, maybe try getting out of um, YouTube and coming back in again. That might help. Focus is a bit fuzzy. Yeah. Sorry, Heather. <laughs> okay. So we're going to start off with the first bits first, and it's actually backwards from, it's not backwards, I'm just doing step two first and not step one. So I'm starting off with some collage. So collage comes in all sorts of shapes and forms. 
I've just gone through my little tub of bits. Um, just going to grab some of these out. Okay, so I've got some commercial tissue papers. I've got some of my gel prints there. <laughs> I'm glad it's better now, Heather. Um, just some, this is some jelly paper that's got an old print on it. Some tissue paper to wrap something in. Music paper. Just any old random stuff. I've got some vintage text, some old atlases. Some stuff I've done some gloss sprays on, a napkin, pages that I've done, you know, put inside my journal and then painted over. And um, for those people who recognise that um, paper from Natalie May, it gets used quite regularly in my house. Um, some vintage text. Yep, so I've just got all sorts of different bits and pieces. None of these are colour coordinated. Okay, I haven't thought about that at all. I'm going to show you how to tie it all together afterwards. And that's one thing, I suppose, um, or as a freedom for me, is that um, because I know some tricks to sort of tie them all together at the end, I'd never really worry about if I've got something that's blue and something that's green and something that's pink and something that's neutral all together. Oh, okay. Oh, use the, use the wrong gel medium, sorry. Um, I'm starting off in my Large Dilutions journal. This is a page I had some excess paint on. I don't care it's got excess paint on because I know I'm going to probably cover over most of it at the end anyway. So with my gel medium, when I put it down, I have a thick-ish brush that I tend to just use for gel medium and brush it down, obviously. It's not rocket science. And then I'm just going to stick out my paper and then with my brush I'm going to use the excess glue that's on my brush to make sure it's glued down really well so I am putting a little bit of pressure um, gluing it down and I'm going to do two pages in my journal you do not have to do two pages I just find if I'm doing one page I might as well do two pages um, I'm also doing it because I want to show you how to have a nice rainbow background and a neutralish background using the same techniques you you do you you decide what you want to do so um you can also do this obviously i'm doing this in the larger day illusions journal do it in any size journal that you want it doesn't have to be in anything any one particular page oh the mermo brushes i gave <laughs> i started using them and then i gave them to my daughters my daughters love using them so you'll have fun with those. They are very, very dye based though. So just make sure that your daughter is more careful than my daughters with them because they get themselves clarity in it and it's like they've painted themselves with food colouring for a week. Christmas present, good job. Yes. It's funny you're talking about Posca paint pens before. Like, I've got all the range of Posca paint pens and I'm still really tempted by her um, um, new paint colour pens. Okay, so because it's me, there is no rhyme or reason to how I am sticking down this collage. I'm really not worried about how it's going down because... At this stage I have no clue what I'm going to be putting on in the background yet so this is how I usually start off my pages I usually don't have much of an idea of what I'm doing when I'm doing these first few layers oh sounds good Carla so um, if you do join up to the mixed media group please share your pages that you make I'd be really interested for you to um, to share and see what everyone's been doing and what you create from these this is a gel printed piece. So I'm using all sorts of different thicknesses of papers too on my page. I'm not minding if things overlap too much. 
I'm putting down the more solid pieces first, I have to say. How do I decide? Um, usually what's at the top of the pile, Pamela? <laughs> it's, it's as simple as that, really. Um, sometimes I have a bit of an idea. Mostly if I'm doing pages like this, they do tend to be mic-making stamps. So, um, you know, there's no real thing. I tend to think more about my stamps when I get down to, if I'm using them as a focal image. But usually as a focal image, I use faces. I don't know why, I just get tend to get drawn to faces a bit. The tissues are really good because they're a great, um, they're great ones to overlap. So I can put that over the vintage text and I've got some of that black coming through from before. It helps to sort of join everything together a little bit. Yes, yeah, so Jane Davenport stuff's great for card making, isn't it? I would, I would love to be able to draw as effort faces and then people as effortly as she does. So a lot of the times, and you'll see this in my pages, I do tend to use a lot of text. I don't know why. It's just, I was probably the teacher in me. I just like words on the page. Right, yes, I get drawn to faces. I get it now. I'm a bit slow tonight. Um, and again, while you're doing this, I, um, for those of you who've followed my channel for a while, know I tend to make my pages quite busy. You can stop at any stage, and that's it's really important for you to you know, not think that you have to do everything. I'm going to show you everything on this page, but you don't have to do everything. You might decide, you know, that's enough collage. I'm certainly not going to finish off the page with this. That's enough for me. Actually, I am going to do this because I just want to show you. For those people who haven't used them before, napkins are a great way, particularly coming up to Christmas time, to add collage to your pages. You do need to peel off the backing though. Most um, napkins have quite a few layers on them. So you do need to peel off some of the layers of white. But you can see there, it just melts onto the page. Beautifully. Yeah, um, using a little bit of washi tape helps. So you put a little bit of washi tape on the very edge and use that to help you pull stuff apart because I don't have any nails so I really st struggle with that too. And usually how I decide when I'm finished my collage is I run out of all my little pieces. Oh, that's a good idea Melinda. Right. I'm going to take a, uh, an after shot of my um, studio when I finish because I've already started making avalanches around me. Okay, I'm just going to dry my page off. I hope that heat gun isn't too loud. Anyone have any questions while I'm waiting? We've got people from Canada and England, We've got lots of people from Australia and New Zealand. So welcome to you all. Oh sorry, someone did ask me that before. My hand's going really well, thank you. Um yeah. I've got almost well I've got full movement back in it, which is awesome because I was told 
when it happens and after they've done a bit of looking at it um that oh portugal and israel wow um when they looked at it that i might only get 60 percent movement back in my hand so i've got full movement i can turn it around which is bizarre when you think at the very beginning of the year i couldn't even it was sort of at this angle i couldn't even turn it because i'd torn the ligaments as well so it was it's huge um yeah so I'm, I'm really really thankful that everything came back and i think the fact um that i was exercising it and making sure i was still using it was was really important so that was good but yeah um, you know i don't advise breaking bones so it wasn't fun and um, particularly the way i broke it don't do that um where do i get my tissue paper from um these ones are the dina wakeley um tissue papers so i get them from my local shops um bev's cross craft um navi may um crafty cut and um, cats there's all sorts of stores around who sell those then um the flower napkin um i think one of my friends i went to dinner with had some pretty napkins and i asked if i could take one home with me they know i'm a bit weird so they um they said that was okay um but sometimes you go to fancy home stores and stuff you can get them if you've got some crafty friends around you might buy a pack each and swap some napkins um yeah that's why oh norway as well awesome thank you for all those people who sent me lovely comments and and have been thinking of me i really appreciate it it's certainly helped me um mentally when i did it that um there were so many of you lovely lovely people who were commenting and making sure I was okay so I really appreciated that so right now we're going to do two different pages these are um, obviously very colored at the moment um, so I'm going to show you one way to um, both ways I'm going to show you how to tie it all together but um, one I'm going to make more neutral one I'm going to make more rainbow hi Bonnie how are you I'm glad you got to see me when I popped in there. Have a good sleep and I will see you um, tomorrow. And we can, we well, won't be hanging out live, but um, we can hang out together. Okay, so on this side, I'm going to make the more neutral page. And I'm just using some gesso. Really, really light over the entire page. Now, this isn't entirely um, dry. This is just a really, really good way of neutralizing the color enough. I can still see all the collage underneath, but it just takes enough of the color off the page that it ties it all together. So it's a really, really simple way to, you know, if I just wanted collage just to get rid of that white page, but then wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. I've got that collage, I've got that texture, I've got stuff peeking through, but it just immediately dulls it down so it all sort of hangs out together. You can, Leanne. Um, hi, Leslie. Um, you need to tape it onto a carrier sheet. So if you've got some, um, like just normal piece of A4 paper, a printer paper, and just um, washi tape your tissue onto that, and then put it through the printer. I'd suggest doing it with a laser printer um, and have a practice to see how it goes. But yes, you can print on that. I have printed stuff onto tissue paper myself before. But you can stencil onto tissue paper um, or stamp onto it. Uh, I had some in here somewhere. Maybe I used it in my... Um... Oh, here you go. So there's some tissue paper that I just stamped on. So, um, and tear that up and use it in collages. So it's just a great way sort of to melt things into the background. So if you didn't want to stamp on it, you could use something like that. Okay, so we're going to be working mainly on this page today. I will show you what I'm going to do with this page in the end. But this is the page we're going to be working on. So we've done the collage. Now we're going to add colour. And I'm going to sort of combine two steps. I'm going to add colour and I'm going to use some stenciling at the same time. And when I'm adding colour, again, I don't really think about what colour I'm using too much. 
I just add color. <laughs> So again, I'm just using acrylic paints and just colouring the background. Now, if you wanted to um, use watercolours to do this, you certainly can. You just need to be aware that they're obviously um, going to be reactivated if you're going to add other water reactive layers over the top. So if you are planning to do this with watercolour, um, just make sure that you know you're not going to be adding too many wet glues or you know wet stenciling over the top because it will start to activate the the other layers underneath. Oh, tracing paper is a good idea, and you obviously you can print on vellum and stuff too. So it doesn't vellum doesn't glue down as well onto pages. I have to admit, but um, it gives you good good little areas to start off with. So I'm just doing one layer of colour. And I've started off with yellow. You could start off with any colour. Yeah, I'm the same. I I really struggle with water activated stuff. Like I love those dilution sprays. I've had lots of them in the past, but I just can't use them. They just bug me. <laughs> um, it's got nothing to do with the product. The product itself is wonderful. It's just I suck at using water soluble because I just like adding so many layers. So. If you're a really layery person, they're not great. Okay, so I have dried off this layer. Now, for those of you who have followed me for a while, know that acrylic paint, once it is dry, it is permanent. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure she did. <laughs> she's, she's a rum in that one. Okay, I'm going to put on a second layer of paint. And I'm deliberately overlaying the paint. Okay. Now, I forgot to explain at the start of this lesson, um, which is something I tend to explain in my live lessons. I'm sure Krista has heard this before, is I do work fast. So if you don't tend to work as fast, you might only do one of these patches at a time. Okay, but because I'm working fast, this is still wet, so I'm still going to be able to do what I want to do, which is grab a stencil. This is one from Stencil Girl, a wet wipe, and I'm going to rub away the paint. And already, I can see this has dried a little bit. That's okay, just rub a bit harder. So you want a juicy wet wipe but not ridiculously wet. Um, sometimes when people do this, they find that they're rubbing everything away. That probably means your wet wipe's a little bit too wet. Okay, but you can see what I mean. You don't want it to dry on yourself. So um, if you are working a little bit slower and there's nothing wrong with that, it's just I'm impatient, um, just do one little patch at a time. Okay. So when you peel off, you can see that pattern come through. I've pulled off a little bit of paper. I really don't care that that's been pulled off. It's all good. This is just adding extra color and extra texture. But already you can see that that collage in the background, you can still see it, but it's starting to blend in together a little bit more. I'm just gonna heat set this again, because I'm gonna do this again with a, a contrasting color. Probably does help if you let your dry gel medium dry first. Oh, I've done something. Oh, got you back again. <laughs> you disappeared with all your comments. Okay, so I'm going to go in again. So I've just used basically the printing colours, so yellow, magenta, and I know I'm going to go in turquoise just because they're nice and bright. They're almost um, almost primaries, so they're gonna work against each other. And the, again, the good thing about working with acrylics is that um, 
once they're permanent I can put a blue on top of a yellow and I'm not going to make a green it will stay blue again I'm being pretty rough and ready with how I'm putting this on and I'm going to use the same stencil again so one of the things about um, creating any piece of art is um, repetition whether it be repetition in colour or in pattern so by using the same stencil I'm going to create that repetition again I'm just going to flip it round though so I'm not using the same patterns over it and that's why I really love this stencil is the fact that um, while it's all circles there's the different sizes of circles um, so those Aussies who are in the, the group here, um, Natalie May is your, your woman for Stencil Girl stencils, which is, this is one of them. Don't ask me for the life of me who makes it, uh, who designed it though. I think it was Carolyn Doobie, but for those of you elsewhere, I'm sure you might find someone else who does it. Hi Jenny, how are you? So again, you can see here now I've got that yellow, I've got that beautiful blue coming up through it. And because these layers of acrylic paint are so thin, it really doesn't take all that long to dry. Now, some people um, prefer not to use a heat tool with acrylic paint because it is a type of plastic. I know um, Dina Wakeley is a big believer in not using a heat tool. I just have no patience. I like to work quick. So if I, um, if I can heat it up quickly, and, and get on to my next layer, I will. So this is, we've done collage, we've added some color, and we've also added some stenciling. So um, this is this type, type, <laughs> the type of stenciling I've added on here is called reductive stenciling, or sometimes it's called ghosting, particularly if you um, follow Di Reevely, um, by rubbing it away. So it's not like your traditional stenciling of actually stenciling over the top, which I will do um, in a little while. So we've done two, three steps. The next thing I'm going to do is add some mic making. And I'm going to do that in two ways. The first way I'm going to do that is by using some stamps. So I've got my whole tub. Um, in my little cleanup, I decided to pull out all my mic making stamps that I use regularly and chuck them in this little tub just so they're easily accessible um, and I can use. I've got a whole mix of ones in here. I've got some paper artsy ones. I've got the Tim Holtz ones. They, they come from all sorts of places, but they're, they're just really handy to have. So if you've got some mic making stamps, that's a good way. Um, I am going to be using archival ink to stamp. And the reason I use archival ink is because again, it's a permanent ink. So it's going to hold up to different layers. It's going to not bleed onto other layers. As soon as I put it down, that's where it's going to stay, which um, for me is really important. Now, if you've got dye inks and so on, obviously you can use those, but again, just be aware that if you put like um, a distress ink, dye ink over the top of this, and then wanted to glue more collage over the top, it um, may bleed. Hello from Ireland. Where in Ireland are you calling from? I miss Ireland dreadfully at the moment. So I'm going to use in my background stamping, because I still want to add a little bit of color to this. Um, similar colors that I've already used. So again, I'm now repeating color. So I'm kind of also repeating um, shape and size because I'm, I'm using this dot stamp. How old was I? I was 10 when I left Ireland. 
so but we used to go back quite regularly it's Australia's home and Ireland's home so I'll say I'm going home when I'm going to Ireland and then I'll say I'm going home when I'm coming back to Australia <laughs> so I've got two homes um, but I, I desperately want to take my kids back there so they can meet all their family okay so again I'm just bending my stamp I'm not using a block you can use a block if you want but I find I've got more freedom if I sort of move um, move it around a little bit yes yellow and teal down here it is it's lovely it's, it really shows up against each other yeah Tassie is quite similar um, it isn't isn't I, I, I can lull myself into the fact it is but um, once you go back you realize it is quite different I think, I think it's more just the um, what do you call it the the fauna the trees that yeah you know you've got a lot of greens there but just the the trees and so on are so different so while I'm not really thinking about where I'm putting the stamps, I am sort of thinking about the patterns they're making and the contrast they're making. So I'm not sure how clear that is because I've got my, um, my iPad's a little bit far away, so I'm not sure, but I'll show you a close up at the end. And I'm just stamping off until there's no more ink on them. So I'm getting these ghost prints as well. Again, you can put as much or as little on as possible. And if you've only got black ink, use black ink. You know, there's, there is no right or wrong to how you do this. Okay. So, the people in the culture. They, they can be similar sometimes. <laughs> so I'm just going to go in with a little bit of black. So when you're using black and white on a page, you need to be a little bit more deliberate than where you're putting it because it is going to draw your eyes straight away. Okay. So there's nothing wrong with it and you need black and white on a page to balance it up. What was the product used for the background colours? Um, they were Dina Wakely, um, Dina Wakely paints. I never clean my stamps, Judith. <laughs> never. Um, if I did, I was just a baby wipe, but I never clean them. And because archival ink is so permanent, they, they get stained. So if you don't want stained stamps, you can get stamp cleaners and so on, but I never bother with them. Um, yeah. Oh, Dublin, I love Dublin. My family's from Donegal. So we grew up in, in Derry, um, but all mum's family lived in Donegal, um, near Letterkenny. And um, yeah, that's where we used to spend our holidays. So if you ever if you ever get up to Donegal, go, I highly recommend you go to um, Portno for your holiday. Um, but uh, did I plan the colours or I'm just going with the flow? I'm just going with the flow. They are they are colours I use fairly regularly. Um, I love that combination of um, the turquoise yellow and pink. But they're they're just colours I'm going for. Okay, so I've just put in some crosses as well. Now the reason I did that was to show you a bit of a cheat. Oops. Because one of the next things on our list is to put in some mic making.
<laughs> I'm glad you enjoyed it because some people get horrified when I answer that, Judah. It's like my stencils. People ask me if I clean my stencils. It's like, what's that? Okay, so if you don't, if you are not confident at mic making, oh, did I throw it out? I threw it out, didn't I? Um, if you're not confident in mic making, there are lots and lots of mic making stamps out there. But what I would suggest you do is to get an old piece of paper. It could be even some of your collage paper and just doodle. Just make marks. There's no right or wrong. And for all those people who are on Instagram at the moment, watching all the collage fodder stuff. Oh, here you go. I've just made some collage fodder. Okay, so it's a great way to experiment with your mic making that you can chuck into your um, your little collage pile afterwards and, you know, have for another day. So, you know, there's another piece. So I could do circles on it. That's all my mic making is, just making random dots or lines or simple shapes. So... You know, if you look up on um, Pinterest or on Google, look up Z tangles patterns, you'll see lots of doodling marks. But sometimes those are quite complicated, just really simple things like squares, lines and, and circles. They're fair enough. So this is using my good old paint pens. So those stamped images, because I didn't ink it up very well, didn't work very well. So I'm just going over the top with my paint pen. And again, you know, if you want to do this, you could stamp out with a really light ink underneath and then go over it with your paint pens and it looks like you've drawn the marks. In natural fact, you've used the stamp to help you out. So when I'm adding mic making, I tend to add it in three places on my page. And again, that's sort of a little rule I have. When I do things, add them in three. So I'll add three. You notice when I put down the colours, I added them in threes. That wasn't, it wasn't consciously, it, it was consciously done, but because I do it so often, I don't consciously think about it these days. The reason I do it is it creates those visual triangles. So I've got those three bits of um, pink on the page, I've got those three bits of yellow on the page, I've got those three bits of turquoise on the page. You know, I've got those three marks um, of the crosses on the page. I've got this visual triangle, I do have four, but you can sort of see that triangle of the, um, the circles on the page. So just thinking about, you know, when I'm stamping or putting down a colour, put it into the three spots. Doesn't matter what three spots, just put it in three spots and you should end up with those naturally occurring. Um, triangles in your background. Sorry, I'm having a moment. I couldn't remember what I was trying to say. So the other thing is, when you're using paint pens or any media, it doesn't have to be paint pens, um, vary the sizes that you've gotten them. So um, paint pens are just acrylic paint in a pen form. But if you don't have the pens, just use acrylic paint. And what I suggest is buy a really, really cheap set of paint brushes that you don't mind mangling, um, kids' paint brushes, that you can sort of press and squish and all sorts of different shapes, and you can find some beautiful marks. And I know when I was um, playing along with um, my daughters when they were painting, I used to practice with their paint brushes, just making different marks on the page, and it just used to be so much fun. Okay, yes, but just get the pens. <laughs> Yes, the pens are excellent, but um, it's all good. Okay, sorry, my phone came up with something weird. Please let me know if I'm still broadcasting. Okay, so I'm using a wider pen now. This is a 7M, and I'm just going to use it as as circles on the page and I'm going to overlap my marks because that's the other thing that you want to do and we've been doing it the whole way through we have been um, overlapping the stenciling we've been overlapping our colors we've been overlapping her collage 
So I am deliberately going through those marks that I've already made. And I'm just going to weave these across the page in a sort of a strip. We're just tying one side of the page to the other. So I'm just adding in some white and black. And you can see how that white really comes up on that page. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grab out a stencil. If I can find it. I've had it out before. You can get all sorts of um, mic making stencils as well. So, oops, don't put your hand in wet paint. <laughs> These are actually stencils from um, Natalie May, who, um, if I forgot to tell you or if you've joined since, she is giving um, everyone a 10% discount code. Um, so, leave 15k. Uh, if you want to jump onto her website, she actually manufactures these stencils. So she's got a whole range of her own stencils, which are awesome. And this is a great way, adding white onto a page is a great way of balancing your page out. Now, for those of you who have been art journaling a while or doing art or are proper artists, you've probably heard lots of things about white space. I'm not very good at putting white space into my journaling but I am good at adding in afterwards so this is quite busy if you like that that's great but if you want to calm it down a little bit by stenciling over the top or adding some white on it that will sort of draw it back again a little bit so I'm just going to add a little bit of white onto my page I'm going to add some of these chevrons so if you're new to stenciling I've just got a compressed makeup sponge here I'm going to dip it in the paint I don't know if you can see that, how it's actually raised up on the, the sponge. It's a bit hard when it's white. Okay, so you can see a little bit of paint raised up. If I try to stencil with that as is, it's going to leak underneath. So on my glass board, I'm actually going to work that into the surface. So now there's no paint. It's all worked into the surface. And I'm going to stencil with that. Okay, so this is how you make sure that you're not going to get... I'm just moving my iPad because I'm pouncing the thing, so I do apologise when it starts sliding into view. Um, how you're not going to get paint leaking under your stencil. You need a lot less paint to stencil with than you think. And usually the mistake most people make is they put on way too much paint. Yeah, it really is. Once you've worked it out, it's like, oh, well, why didn't I do that before? Okay. So by stenciling it on two, you just get that softer. Um, yes, Leslie, I will. I'll just put it up over there. For you. So it is a it is a one time deal thing. So if you've got a bit to buy, <laughs> you could um, get it all in one one go. But I can tell you right now, she's not good for your bank account. Every five minutes, she's getting all this new cool stuff in. I was like, oh, I just have to have that. So I go back and buy something else again. <laughs> okay. So now I've got my stenciling in here. So I've got a little bit of white. Again, a bit of direction happening on my page. So as I said before, because I know some people are dropping in and dropping out, um, you stop at any stage you want. You do not have to do all these steps. So you might like really just like stop with that back stenciling or you might like the mic making and stop there. 
you might have just liked having the collage in the background. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel you, Rhonda. But um, don't feel you have to buy all the things as well. Um, I know it is really, really tempting when you're beginning, but um, <laughs> um, just, just see what you've got, see what works. And, and find what, out what you like as well, um, which again can be a bit expensive because you, you, um, you do check out a few different things and then, then go back to it. Okay, so let's have a look at our list. What have we done? so far right so we've done some collage we have built the background with color we've added stamps and stencils we've added some deliberate color with that black and white and it doesn't have to be black and white it can be any colors I'm just using black and white We've sort of done some mic making already, but I can go back and add that in afterwards. So we're gonna go in and add a focal image now. So there are lots and lots of ways that you can... <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only, I feel bad for being in the neighbor. <laughs> yeah, it's terrible, isn't it? I'm so sorry. Um, but yeah, yeah, don't feel that you have to buy all the things. I know it's really tempting. I know it is really tempting. But please remember when you see pictures of my um, my art journal room, my all the stuff I've got, I've been collecting for over 30 years. I've, I've been doing this a long time. Um, so, you know, it is what it is. Right, we're going to make a focal image. So there are lots and lots of ways that you can make a focal image. One way is to draw your own, which is a bit scary um, when you're doing this page. So I'll show you how to do that over here. We're going to go for the easier version. Uh, I brought it in before. Can I find it? No. Brief moment trying to find stuff. <clears throat> okay, I had a tin of stuff beforehand. I know I had it because I got some collage tissue out of it. And now it's completely disappeared. That's frustrating. I have no idea where it's gone. <laughs> oh, there it is. It's fallen in my stencil kit. Um, it's bath time, quiet time. <laughs> And um, this is gel plate storage tins. They're relatively cheap, but they fit the, um, I, I did tidy up too much. They fit the collage tissue papers in really, really easily. Because I, I take stuff out of packets. I can't handle having them in packets. So at least if I've got them like this, I can flip through them and they don't get too banged up. So I'm going to put this lady on my page, I think. Okay. That's true. And definitely not losing your marbles. It is, it's my therapy. Um, and look, I don't smoke, I don't drink. I don't do, apart from being addicted to Diet Coke. Um, 
I'm pretty good with all that stuff so if I spend it on night supplies that I actually use I'm, I'm not too worried about it and the good thing is my two girls love it and they come in and they use the stuff so um, I know it's not going to go to waste I do feel guilty about my stack of scrapbooking papers however because they've been sitting here for quite a while and they're very unloved <laughs> yes Jenny and Nat and um, you know all your local school is really really important too and for those people elsewhere really important to su support your local stores because if we don't have our local stores we don't get the stuff um, and I don't know about you, but particularly the art supplies, while you can buy them online, it, it's, it is much nicer to actually know what the colours are in real life and actually be able to go in and have a look at them. So, okay. I'm just cutting these out. So, for those of you who haven't seen these before, these are really old, but it's still around, I think. These are the Dina Wakely collage tissues. Um, one of the first packs she brought out with... Um, faces on it now I'm just using this because I want to see my background through it I could have cut an image out of a magazine and stuck that on I'll show you some examples of that in my journal in a minute um, I could trace if I had a magazine image and had some tissue paper I could trace over the um, image in the magazine and have it on um, tissue paper to glue down on my journal there are so many different ways that you can do this so if you don't have access to something like this don't think oh I can't do it and you know cut it out of a magazine draw it yourself I'll show you some basics of how to draw it yourself in a minute or um, trace over it so there's there's lots of ways to do it okay <laughs> that's a good way Marilyn yes my, it used to be my dream to run on a craft store but it would just be an excuse for me to actually have um, all, all the stuff. It's a really good job I cleaned up because now I've lost my gel medium, which is brand new. There it is, hiding under my paints. <laughs> Thank you, Paula. Okay, so because everything in the background is acrylic paint or um, done with the archival paint, I can go back over with my gel medium and not be worried that anything's going to move. Um, and when you're gluing down tissue papers, uh, gel medium is really, really good for that because it's nice and thin and flexible. I'm fairly generous. Like this is spread out really, really thin, but I have actually covered most of my page with my gel medium just so I can get something nice and flat on the page. Now, the good thing about the Dina Wakely gel medium is that it has um, an open, a drying time of about 10 minutes. So if it's not particularly flat, you can peel it up and, and move it around and flatten it out until your heart's content. Okay, once I've finished, I'm going to go back over with my brush. It's still got gel medium on it and I'm really pushing that tissue down okay and that's what's going to give you the translucence it's a bit like putting grease onto um, a paper bag you want to have both sides saturated okay so the beauty of um, being able to use a tissue paper for that is the fact that you get something um, translucent on your page I can see my background through it so all those layers that I've done are still there that I can see I'm just going to dry this off Was it your cat picture wasn't um, gluing down? Was it on tissue? Yes, using tissue to stamp on. Like it's a great way to extend the use of your stamps. 
because um, if you're stamping on something that's got collage or texture on it, you're never going to get a clean stamped image. So if you can put it onto tissue and then glue it down, because it's a little bit more flexible, it would go over it and look like you've stamped perfectly. So, just going this off again. Any thoughts on black gesso? I love black gesso. <laughs> Did you want deeper than that? Um, black gesso is really matte and... Um, Um, yeah, I just, uh, if I'm looking for a really black, black, I'll use black gesso. Um, oh, that's what I was going to show you. I'll show you on another page. But I'll be called an enabler again if I show you. Um, stamping onto black gesso looks amazing too. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Who, eccentricity, sorry. Um, rice paper isn't as translucent as tissue paper. So rice paper, because it's got a fibre through it, um, some of it's a little bit thicker than others, so it won't be quite as translucent. So just, just be aware of that. And sometimes rice paper can be a little bit uh, thicker than um, normal paper, uh, sorry, normal tissue paper as well. So not all rice papers get as thin as a tissue paper. So just be aware. And same for, you know, some people use gift wrap instead of tissue paper um can be the same thing in australia and I'm, i presume it's the same elsewhere grease proof paper you can buy from the supermarket is super super cheap so like this roll cost me three australian dollars um it's just like uh, deli paper and it's great for stamping on it goes mostly translucent when you stamp on it but um it'll still have a little bit of opacity to it. So with the gift paper being so shiny, um, if you use a matte gel medium, that will take the shine off it. So uh, a lot of people ask me on YouTube about what I use to seal my pages. I don't seal my pages at all. Um, it's got gel medium over the top. It's matte gel medium, and I've never had a problem with them sticking or anything like that. So, yeah. Hopefully that helps. Okay. So one of the first things I do when I've got a figure on my page, whether it's something I've drawn myself, um, a collage tissue like this, or even on magazine images, um, is to draw in the whites of the eyes. And the reason for that is to read something as a face, our brain immediately looks for eyes. So I'm just making the eyes really pop out by putting in the whites of the eyes and also by putting in the catchalls which are the little um, flecks of light um, in your eyes so that's what makes us alive basically if you're looking at a picture and it doesn't have or if you've drawn something and you don't have that little white dot in your pupil it will actually look really flat and not alive. So already, I don't know if you can see that, but just by putting in the white, it just immediately reads more as a face now. <laughs> That's a bit scary. Yes, oh, the shimmer paints are amazing. I do love the shimmer paints. Okay, so... I really like my background, but I want to pop this face out a little bit more. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my Stabilo wall pencil. So this is a, <laughs> I'm getting a complex now with you all buying stuff because of me. This is the Stabilo wall pencil. It's a water soluble um, pencil. It is really, really inky black. It's very um, waxy, so um, it goes onto the page. It's just so smooth when it goes onto the page, especially if the page has been heated a little bit. It'll just glide on. Once it's water activated, it goes into this really intense dark black. I love it because it's brilliant at creating shadows and shades really, really easily. Um, but, you know, if you, if you had another black pencil... 
you could use that too. Um, Australians, lots of uh, stamp stores sell them. Um, so you can certainly get your hands on that. Um, office works do too, but um, I quite often don't have them in stock. So just be aware. So at the top of here, she didn't actually have a finished head. I'm just going to draw it in. So that's the good thing about these sorts of things. Because it's got this, these lines on it, you can then draw over the top of them. And it's a great way to train your hand in how to draw a face. So if you've never drawn a face before, well, just, you know, draw over the lines really sketchily. And, you know, you can't really see them. But it's training my hand into how to draw, you know, an eye. Where to put the shadows, where the hair goes. And the best thing is, the looser you are with your pencil, and the more sketchy it looks, the more hand-drawn it actually looks. Okay, so you can sort of see that now coming out from the background. Um, yes, Stabilo Oil Pencil. Yeah. Um, any tips on knowing where to highlight? Do you mean within the eye? Doesn't really mind, it doesn't really matter where you highlight as long as it's the same in each eye. So, um, hang on. Any highlight anywhere on the page. Not sure what you mean, sorry. I'll show you in a second. Okay. So I've just blocked out the eyes. Oh right, okay. Um not really. Just <laughs> where it needs it, you sort of have to decide where the light's coming from. So um, on her face, for example, it's quite dark on here. So that means the light's coming from this way. So hang on a minute, that's dark there, so it's coming this way. <laughs> Think about it, Neve. So over here is going to be a little bit lighter, which means most of your highlights are going to be on this side of the page. And this side's going to be slightly darker. So if I was painting this, I'd have darker colours and shadows on this side and I'd have lighter colours on this side. So it's just thinking about where the light is coming from. So with that, you know, if I decided the light was coming from over this way and I put my catch all over here, I would have to do the same in this eye because otherwise she's going to look a bit cross-eyed cross and, and funny need to be in exactly the same position but as long as it's roughly in the same position um, it means the light's coming from the same source um, hope, hope that helps hokey dokey so I am hmm, I'm going to paint in her hair a little bit more of a solid colour just to frame off the face, I'm still going to see the texture underneath the face and I'm going to see the background, but I want to do some writing in her hair. So I'm just going to think about the hair. And because I have used the colours in the background, I'm going to choose from that palette of colours again. So again, I'm repeating pattern and repeating colour. So I'm going to go for the turquoise because I really I like the turquoise colour. Um, now just be aware, I've done something slightly dumb. <laughs> I've put Stabilo Oil Pencil on here, which is a water activated pencil. So obviously when wet paint touches it, it's going to react, which gives you some really cool effects. It's great for giving you automatic shadows. But just be aware if you want really pure colour. So you can see when I start to bring the paint over to the edge where I've got the paint it suddenly starts giving me those shadows. Okay. But for those of us who aren't, you know, don't feel confident in drawing, I'm not going to say can't draw because everyone can draw. 
I see my confident in drawing. It's, it's just so lovely to have something that gives you sort of natural highlights or shadows. Sorry, I keep calling them highlights, but natural shadows without you having to do very much. Okay, so if you didn't want that, for example, or you wanted to keep a more solid line, um, either go over again with the stabilo or pencil at the end or leave that to the very last step. There we go. So just by giving her a solid hair, that suddenly frames her face a little bit more and um, gives the, the pattern in the background a real focus. I was going to say the last thing I was going to do, but it's not the last thing I'm going to do. But for some reason, I always do like putting colour around the iris. And I think it's because I'm blue-eyed, I tend to go for blue and turquoise colours. I've noticed people who you know, have green eyes tend to go for greens. I don't know if that's just because that's what we're used to looking in the mirror or what. Right. If you have a look at my journals, most of my, most of my girls have blue eyes. The colour does blend in with the rest of the page. So it's that whole thing of if you use colours that you know will go together. Now, again, reiterating the fact that I'm using acrylics so I can build up those layers and each layer is dry as I go. Um, obviously, also if I was using water-soluble um, colours, this would be a muddy brown mess because mixing red, yellow and blue together, obviously I'm going to get brown, shades of brown. So just be aware that you know, because each of my layers underneath are dry, um, I'm getting that true colour and it's working because I've repeated those colours from the background. So you can see those colours peeping up through. So you can add as much as, as little as you wanted to her. You could put cheeks on if you wanted to. Um, if you wanted to paint in the rest of the face, you could as well. The final thing that I'm going to do for the moment though is I'm going to put some text on my lovely lady. Just going to make sure this is actually dried off. Because I have no idea what text I'm going to put on her. This again is where I um, go searching. Usually on my videos this is where there's a little pause in proceedings. I'm just going to go onto Google and type in strong women quotes. And I tend to go to images to look for them, usually because they've got, it's just easier. <laughs> um, I want something fairly shortish because it's going to fit in here. I should have one chosen beforehand, but I didn't know what image I was going to use. If anyone's got any suggestions, that's... Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Use those... Text. What do you mean by the text? Sorry. Like that one. Some women fear the fire, some seem to become it. With those texts, why is it so important? Zoe. Um, text, you don't have to put text on a page at all. I, I personally like it because I like, I love text. Um, I think it's, um, I just think it's because I'm a teacher probably. 
<laughs> I just like text. And for me, in my art journal, um, I find I either want to write my feelings out on it or I want to have a quote that captures my feelings. So um, you certainly don't have to do it. Um, but there you go, Susie. Um, you certainly don't have to put a, a, a text on the page, a text on the page, but, um, you know, if you want to, you can. So, um, and the reason I'm doing it tonight is lots of people have asked me how I do my handwriting, so I'm just going to demonstrate how to do that. Um, for those of you who are asking, there's a discount code for Natalie May, um, which is sitting over here. So, um, as I said on, on the little piece that I'm doing, I use paint pen. Now, the reason I do that is because I tend to work in acrylic paint. When acrylic paint is wet, I can remove it with a wet wipe. So if I make a spelling mistake, I can remove it. I'm very heavy handed with pencil. Um, I scratch into the surface when I try it. If I make a mistake and rub it away, um, it dents into it and annoys me. You could use your stabilo or pencil to do it because you can wipe that away with your um, wet wipe as well. So if you want to sort of sketch it out and see if it works and you've got a stabilo or pencil, certainly use that. Um, or you can just be brave and, and use your paint pen. So I'm using my fine paint pen and I'm just going to write out my normal handwriting. So, oops. I'm leaving a little bit of a gap between the, the letters. It's not coming out perfectly, that's fine. I've made a spelling mistake already. So I can just get my wet wipe, the handy wet wipe that is sitting there. Okay, so I've just written it out really, really simply. But now I've got it on my page, then I can play around with it. It just gives me that little bit of breathing room. Yes, definitely, any paint pens will work. So whatever paint pens you've got, you can use. Um, from Bunnings, I've got one of these twin tub brush. I don't want to turn it out because I already managed to pour the whole thing over me yesterday when I knocked it off my page. Multi-use container. It says it came with a lid, but mine didn't come with a lid. They're fairly cheap, so um, yeah. I just use wet wipe to wipe it away. So um, that's, that's what I love about it. So now I'm going in with my thicker pen and I'm going to fill up the space. And how I do that is basically look at the space I've got left on my page. So I can go down here into this space. And I tend to sort of add little triangles onto my letters. And just extend them out so for example with women I've got this big space up here I can go and fill in and if I you know I've got room over here so if I do happen to make my E bigger it's not really a big deal. You should be an expert at it, Cressida. You had all that practice the other day.
I've got two kids. Um, they're having a sleepover at Granny's tonight, which is why it was very quick notice in when we were going to do the class, because it's like, oh, that would be a good day. <laughs> be a good day to choose. So I've got um, a five-year-old, a five-and-a-half-year-old, and my youngest is turning four in two weeks' time. So where's that time gone, really? Yay for grandmas, indeed. See you, Jolene. Lovely to spend some time with you. Thank you for coming. You should get your daughter doing this, Amanda. Oh, this is a quite boring bit because I can't talk and draw and read comments at the same time. <laughs> While I'm fairly good at multitasking, that just doesn't quite work out. And again, I'm doing this in black, but you know, you can do it any colour you fancy. Pen is also starting to fray a little bit. Too much love. So, um, as someone said, they need to practice, and it really is. And I know Diane Reevely bangs on about it too when people sort of say, oh, I want to write like you but this has been my handwriting for 50 years. Um, it's just playing around. Everyone has got their own style of how they do it. This is just one style. It's just, I found it really useful because it just works well for me. Um, particularly in the fact that I can sort of work out the spacing beforehand and then add in the detail afterwards. So once I've finished doing all my writing, I will heat set it because it is, I'm just gonna that, I will put that out again for everyone. Hi Kaz, how are you? There's another expert. Okay. So one of the things I found that really lifts um, Thanks, Paula. One thing I find really lifts um, a handwriting is um, putting in the, sh the, the highlights or um, a drop shadow. I tend to use white, but again, you know, because on this page I could have used a pink, all sorts. I'm just going to put this on one side, but I did show you an example on the, the page here. So again, if you wanted to get these um, files to print out, if you go to the Mixed Media Creative Queens Facebook group and I'll put a link up to this when I upload it um, you can print this out for yourself so it tells you the, the fonts I'm going to do this one with the drop shadow but you could sort of outline the entire letter and then put a different color drop shadow on it you can just keep adding and adding and adding so again there is no right or wrong there is no one way to stop you can stop at any stage so one thing that you do need to be consistent with though when you're doing um, your drop shadows is make sure you always put it on the the same um, angle so I'm pretending my lights coming from this angle and so I'm going always going to put everything on my left hand bottom left hand side of my letters you know if I wanted to put it on the top right hand side that's fine just make sure I do it on the top right hand side of every every letter if that makes sense So what this does is it just really pushes it out from the background and makes it really stand out. Yep, so you go and check them out on Facebook. So hopefully they're, they're handy. Just 
little reminders of how to do it. And again, as I said, you know, these are just my thoughts. They're certainly not right or wrong. Lots of different people, if you follow lots of different art journals, all do them in different ways. Um, this is just what I found works for me. Yeah, probably. So um, definitely if you're a calligrapher, down strokes are really important. They tend to be the thicker strokes. And certainly if you sort of think about where I'm putting them, probably it would be on the down stroke. Um, if you're doing sort of cursive writing, which I can show you an example of, I think, in here, that... You know, your downstrokes are the ones that become thicker. Okay. Did someone move a few of the files? Forgot to highlight my comma. Someone move a few of the files, I'm simply to comment. <clears throat> I'm just going to go back over some of these loosey goosey lines that I blended out. There's some strands of hair. put in some cheeks because why not just trying to find find my pencil no she doesn't want green cheeks this is just a Sibilo woody these are actually kids pencils which are water soluble they're exactly the same as these ones except fat chunky um But they're sort of that waxy. You can sort of blend them in. If you had, you know, the Tim Holtz dress crowns, you could use those as well. It's just to put a little bit of extra colour in. It's like adding in makeup. Less is more. We want the background to sort of be seen through. If you wanted to give a funky eyeshadow, you could. She probably doesn't want purple, but. I start playing now and <laughs> adding stuff that you probably don't need to do. But I, you know, you get to this stage, it's like, oh, I like what I'm doing. So I'm going to keep adding stuff. Knowing when to stop is pretty important. So um, I'm not very good at knowing when to stop. But um, there you go. So that's that's a journal page from, from start to finish. So that was using all the different things that we talked about in here. So we did some collage, did that first. Then we added some color. Then we added some stamps and stencils. We added some deliberate color with the black and the white. We added a focal image. I did some extra mic making over the top of that. I added some text. And then sort of the finishing off was, you know, did she need cheeks? Did she need a little bit of color? Um, so that's where we went with this. Uh, as I said at the very beginning, you don't need to follow it from start to finish. Um, you can pick and choose where you want to go. If you just want to add a focal image, you could paint the background black and, and you know, then add a, a focal image to it. And again, they don't always have to be faces. They could be flowers. They could be cut out from a magazine. So, you know, cut out from a magazine. 
it could be just cutting out of the paper itself and then painting this black and sticking it over the top. This is using a stencil covered over. Um, I was going to show you how to do this background in a second. This is just a, a painted face, so it's painted straight on. So um, this is using a printed collage tish, um, from printer paper. More magazine images, you know, so this is a sample of that really neutral background. You get another sample of a really neutral background. This one, I just did the collage in the background and the painting and then put a focal image on it and used a stamp instead of using text. So I've only done a few steps on this one. So again, it can be quite complicated. It can be really, really simple. It, you know, less, less is more <laughs> sometimes. Less is more. Um, yeah, does anyone have any questions? Is that how long it usually takes you? Uh, most cases, things take me about 40 minutes to an hour. Sometimes I'm churning them out really quickly. Um, that one took me 20 minutes today. So that was a really quick one. Yeah, I'm going to do something with this one. So if you want to stick around and see what I do with this one, feel free. Um, it won't be too long. Don't know what I'm doing with it yet, but... Um, I started out card making um, a long, long time ago. Um, I got in, when I was 12 years old, I saw someone embossing with gold embossing powder. And that just talked to me. So I went home and I was going to make all the Christmas cards in the world. And I made loads and loads and loads. And mum was very kind to me. And I think she wanted a toaster back because I was embossing and over the toaster. Um, but she bought me a heat gun and from then I made lots of cards. Um, then I got into scrapbooking when I started a business with my business partner Sue Bowers. For those Australians might remember um, Opal's embossing uh, enamels. So we um, produced and manufactured that and then um, that got me into scrapbooking because I had to demonstrate how to use the embossing enamels with scrapbooking. Um, so I used to borrow pictures of kids' babies and thought, oh, you know, when I have my own babies, I'll be able to scrapbook all the pictures. And I think I've done about four pages for each of my kids. So <laughs> that didn't last long. When I, in about 2000, I started doing more, lots more collage bookmaking, mini books, um, grungy type stuff, assemblage art. So I got into that more mixed media then. I then travelled overseas for about a year and just took a limited amount of supplies and that's when I got into art journaling. Um, and then I got a little bit of burnout while we were running the business because I had to create so many samples for that I got a little bit burnt out with it all. And um, about 2018 I started doing art, like I dabble in and out, I didn't get rid of any of my stuff. but. Then in 2018, I sort of took it a little bit more seriously for myself to create every day. And that's when I sort of really stuck to doing the art journaling. I just like working in that slightly bigger format. There's nothing like that background, perfect for card making or for the background of a scrapbooking page. So, you know, just because it's an art journal thing doesn't mean you can't transport it to another medium. So. You know, if you are a card maker, do up a, a square of card with that and then chop it into bits and you've got some fabulous backgrounds. So, um, yeah, so that, <laughs> that's the, the ideal story. 20 minutes left. That's why I showed you how to do this page, um, Marilyn, because, because I've got that skeleton down. It's like do collage. And I wasn't worried about what I was going to put over the collage or, you know, what colours. Because I knew I was going to add more colour over the top that would blend it together. Same with this page. I did all that collage and then wiped it out with a gesso. So, you know, it's again more neutral in the background. Um, so, because I've had those rules, so to speak, in my head, I, I, it takes the decision making out of the, the game for me. So, it's like... If I put collage down and it's all different colours, I've got some ways of being able to tie it all together. Um, 
you know, if I put my colours in three, or my patterns or my mic making in three separate things, I'm creating those visual triangles, which makes it easy. A really, really good tip, uh, if I can find, here we go, my colour wheel. Oh. Um, for deciding about colours is, um, if you use something called an analogous colours, which are next door neighbour colours. So if I used a lime green, a darker green and a turquoise, because they sit next to each other on the page, if I blend those colours together, I'm just going to get beautiful colours of green. Um, I'm not going to get mud. If I put red, orange and yellow together, I'm going to get beautiful shades of oranges and reds and so on. I'm not going to get mud. But if I start to put green and red and purple together, that's when things are going to go off the rails slightly. So if you, um, if you know your colour wheel, that makes it a lot easier when you're, you're choosing colours. And I would certainly suggest for people beginning on this journey, um, use colours that are close together on the colour wheel because then you don't have to worry about, you know, oh my God, I've just made mud. Um, it's, they're all gonna be nice shades of colour. The reason I actually, in the background, I was able to use the yellow, a pinky red and a blue was because I was drying them off in between the layers so they were, they were permanent and they weren't reacting with each other. So um, it was one dried layer on top of another so the colours stood out separately, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, for those of you who um, want to leave it at that, that's fine. That's pretty much all I'm showing you. I'm just going to finish off this last little page. It shouldn't take me too long. But just a reminder again, if you want to, take advantage of it. And just ask Natalie about international shipping. Um, I know she does ship to New Zealand. But... <laughs> so yeah, Melinda, thank you so much for hanging out. Um, ask about other countries as well. Um, but um, I'm, and I'm not sure about that one. But she's got a, a discount code, new 15k to celebrate um, all the things I've used today. She would have access to, and so would the lovely um, Jenny at Hillbilly Scrapping, um, creating mixed media with Michelle Brown in, in um, Melbourne. Has just had a huge shipment of stuff. Bev's Crosscraft. If you're interested in doing some of my online class as well, if you've enjoyed this, if you go to Bev's Crosscraft, I've got seven um, online classes there that you um, can access as well. So they're $25 for a class. Um, it's about, well, there's usually about four or five hours of videos there because I get out of control. I do the three hour live video and I add extra videos in as well. So <laughs> it's just because it's me. Okay, I'm just going to um, echo this page. So I'm going to just use the turquoise in the background. I'll be quite generous with it. I'm using a mostly dry brush. It's slightly damp. Again, you're probably going, but you've just done all that collage. Why are you whiting it all out? But I'm going to do that stenciling over the top again. Now, the other great thing about... Um, acrylics is if you add a little bit of water to it you get this almost um, watercolor effect which I really love and the great thing about doing this is because it's got the collage underneath you don't have to put collage on it obviously but because it's got the collage underneath it um, helps to give you a little bit of texture on your page yeah Nice to see you. Um, now, someone asked me about gel medium. The classes I have attended me have used gesso, but I have bleed through. Um, do you mean to do your initial, to seal your page or to prep your page? Is that, here we go, Susie Q. Um, I very rarely, I, I obviously use gesso on this page, but I actually very rarely use gesso. Um, because if I've got collage, um, 
if I've got collage in the background, I've generally used gel medium to seal over the collage, which kind of seals the page anyway. Or I'm using acrylic paint, so <clears throat> it doesn't really matter. Um, I don't have bleed through. It might be the, the thickness of your paper. What journal are you using to, to work on? Or what material, like are you using acrylic paints or if you're using something very watery you might go through. So this is Dilesion's journal, I don't have any bleed through, but I tend to use strictly acrylic paints in mine. I do know when I've used her um, uh, spray inks, it does bleed through occasionally, but yeah, it's, to be honest it's never really bothered me. If, if you are really concerned about it, put a strip of um, like neutral washi tape or a masking tape because the place it's going to bleed through is obviously through the bind and that's the weakest point. So if you put some masking tape over it and then go on, that should help. So, so look, please do more lives. <laughs> I, I will try and do more lives. It's just really hard to squeeze them in sometimes. So I will try. Um, I'm just going to draw a really quick face, okay? I am certainly not a, a face drawing expert by any stretch of the imagination. There's so many more talented people out there. Go YouTube it. You will find some amazing things. This, this is what I've learned so far. So I'm just going to start. I'm just using my acrylic, oh, my acrylic, my stipula or pencil. And I'm just going to roughly draw out a... Kind of oval shape and put in a neck, put in some shoulders. Okay, so when you're drawing a face, um, it's the thing that's most important is where you actually put the face um, or your features on the face. So I've drawn a midline halfway down the page, I'm going to draw a line halfway across the page. Okay, that halfway line is actually where your eyes sit. A lot of people try and put your eyes up here and your face looks odd. So the halfway line is your eyes, then we're gonna draw it in half again. So the quarter line and then the eighth line. Okay, so that's gonna be our eyes, our nose and our mouth. I know it's really hard to see because I've done it quite lightly. This is all your forehead. So our forehead is actually a lot bigger than we expect. Um, now I'm going to just go in and draw my eyes. So I'm just going to draw two overly shapes there, or um, upside down rain or rainbows. Okay, and then I'm going to go in and draw a circle. Remembering that faces are always going to look odd until you put in the pupils and the catch-alls. You are very welcome, Kimberly. I have to I didn't actually say it at the very beginning, but this is actually a big thank you to you all because um, without you, I wouldn't have my channel, which I adore. It's one of my favourite things to do. And it just blows my mind that I've got 15,000 people who want to watch my videos. <laughs> for a little person from Tassie it's just bizarre but um, I'm, I'm really really thankful so this is the least I can do as a thank you to all of you for supporting me so um, feel free to tag all your friends and get them to come watch the video and and see what we've got on the channel there's lots and lots of content it goes up um, two times a week so you can see lots of stuff for the nose I'm just drawing a circle and then I'm going to draw two smaller circles next to it 
like that. Um, <laughs> no, I, I'm a primary school teacher, an elementary teacher. So I do teach art, but um, not, I haven't been trained in art. In fact, <laughs> my, my, my sad story is, it's not really sad at all, but I, I was always a crafty kid um, and I always enjoyed making things. Um, and when I was in high school, when we got into grade eight, we got to do choices of what we'd like to do. One of my choices was to do art and the art teacher, unfortunately I had at the time, I was, I remember it was a still life and had a scarf in it. And I just painted this long loopy scarf and made it look like it was the rings of Saturn and made my fruit kind of look planety and stuff. And I really liked my painting. And my art teacher said, I don't think art's for you. You should choose something next year. And that just devastated me. So I chose music instead, which was not my forte, I have to say. Um, and I stayed away from art. So I did my crafting and I did my card making at home, but I didn't actually do art. And for the longest time, that was just a big bugbear. Um, and then in 2005, I um, quit my job <laughs> teaching. I had a bit of a... Um, issue a bully of a principal and um, I decided I was going to try art so I went back to TAFE for two years and did a, an arts degree a, a diploma in printmaking I uh, specializing in printmaking and I absolutely adored it having that time to create art but I still didn't really consider myself an artist it was just something that was really fun to do um, and I certainly never really taught it um, but I um, yeah, so from there on, and it's only in the last few years that I've actually given myself the confidence to call myself um, an artist um, because I do, you know, I'm not brilliant at drawing, but I practice and I've got better at it. And I'm certainly a lot more confident with drawing than I have been in the past. And I've noticed that um, I don't know how many people are doing the life book taster sessions. There's a lot of artists on there doing portraits and stuff and whereas I would have looked at, at that a number of years ago and got that's too difficult whereas now I just jump in I'm loving what I'm creating it's very artsy and it's not quite what the teacher's teaching but that's okay because I've taken my own spin on it but I'm just confident enough to dive in and have a go so um yeah you know teachers can make such a positive impact on our lives and they can make such a negative impact on our life and the beautiful thing was hi Vicky um my daughter just adores art. She's always at the craft table at school um, and at after school care when she's there. And she, we were just walking along yesterday and she said, my, my teacher says, I'm the queen. I'm the queen of art in my class. I'm the queen of art. And I just thought, isn't that lovely that she, her teacher has given her the confidence in her artistic ability at such a young age. Um, and I hope that never gets robbed from her. So, um, hey. Is that still working? My iPad's doing something funny, but it does look like it's still doing a live up here. So if anyone's got any comments to say it's still working, that would be great. <laughs> oh, cool. My iPad just stopped. Sorry for that funny thing. Still here. Hi. <laughs> Good. Excellent. I just had a little bit of a queen mother of art. I like that. <laughs> right, so I've got my two, my circle and two little circles and I've got my funny, I've got two um, small circles and then two larger circles at the bottom. We've just got a rainstorm here, so that's probably what's happening. Okay, so I'm now going to go back in and add, um, oh, I'm glad it's all back, add in some more detail. So I've just got the rough things. So I'm just going to go in around... And I'm going to make this slightly darker just so you can see um, on the screen. But where the two little joining bits of the circles are, um, where your nostrils are, I'm just making those a little bit darker. I'm going to take my nose up on one side and I'm going to sweep it around there like that. 
So I'm just making this all a little bit darker just so you can see it a bit better. I'm also going to put in the pupils because everything looks a little bit alien if you don't have pupils. Okay. And then that means on this side, about the same height, that's where my eyebrow on this side is going to go. I'm also going to put in the crease line for my eye. So that sort of joins up here and I'm just going to put my little tear duct in. So this can be as sketchy as you want. I'm being a little bit more precise than my lines, which I don't usually do, just so you can sort of see where I'm drawing them. Okay, and again, you know, go look up good face mapping on um, YouTube because you'll see much better um, versions than I'm showing you here. This is just a really quick and easy way. Okay, with my lips, I'm going to go out and around the tops. Just sort of do that. I'm not going to join them up and same with the bottom. Now we do have a little bit of a dimply bit at the bottom of our lips and then across the middle just in this area I'm just going to darken that up a little bit. Okay now I'm leaving my guidelines in. You can rub them out obviously. I don't mind having them in there. Okay. Okay if you want to put ears on our ears are roughly there next to our eyes, just sort of a little shape there. And I'm a big fan of scribbly lines, so the scribblier the better. And then you can put in a little bit of shading. So obviously on the side of your nose is going to be darker. Obviously underneath our chin. It's going to be quite dark. It's going to be a little bit of darkness um, underneath our nose. I can never remember what that's called. It's going to be a little bit of darkness down this side too. It doesn't need to join up. Okay, so we're putting. Now the other thing is, which is very, very tempting to do, is to try and draw the full eye in. Um, but in lots of cases, if you look at lots of drawings, even here, they're sort of gappy. They don't always draw in the full face. So she's looking okay at the moment. Now all we're going to do is um, put on the hair. Now I suck at hair. But, you know, just have a go. <laughs> what, what can go wrong? Okay, so at the moment I'm sort of, so if you've got a sweeping from one side, There you go. So just a really quick and easy face. I probably made her hair a bit too big, but that's okay. It is what it is. Um, and again, this you, you can do this next step or you can leave it if you wanted to. Because it's a water-soluble pencil, I'm actually going to go in and soften off my lines. But you can see how inky that gets straight away. Okay, so you can blend it out. as much as you need to. And 
and you can see there that while I haven't put in my shadows, oh sorry, the lines on my eyes, just by putting that shadow underneath that kind of oops, completes it. And the good thing is you can always add more water to blend it out a little bit further. So. very dark in there but that's okay so you don't have to do this bit obviously you could just do it with pencil Oops. Okay. So the side of her face is going to have a bit of shading coming in there too this is why I call it the magic pencil because just by magic, just by dropping some water in, it kind of does a job all by itself, which is really good. Okay, so up by her, I've lost my pencil again. I'm glad the lip tip was handy. I don't draw in the eyelashes, no. I'm never any good at them. They're really hard to draw. Um, oh, sorry. I'm sure there are people who are very talented at drawing them. I know um, Jane Davenport is, so if she's got some tips on it, certainly go and watch, watch her um, draw them. But I, I just tend to avoid it, to be honest very dark at the moment if she's looking a bit too dark you can always sponge stuff off again wet wipes to the rescue and the great thing about this and I don't know if you can see this on screen or not but um I can still see that collage underneath so I you know while I've got a little bit of um oops, very dark there while I've got the Um, shadow on here I can still see quite a lot of that collage coming through and I'm just using quite a big watery brush for this bit because having the water on here is what's going to help let it run where it needs to go I'm just going to brush over with water and let the lines do what they need to do. Oops. And I could be really patient, but I'm not, you know me. Just gonna sponge it off. See you, Leslie. Yes, working in lockdown is so much fun, isn't it? <laughs> there you go. So, you know, you can be a bit heavy handed with it or not. Um, if you are, that's okay. But it's just a great way of putting putting shading onto your your person. But even if you don't have that on. Um, it doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to go in and put the whites of the eyes and it should change how she looks again. Does anyone actually use this envelope at the front of the Dilusions journal? It's great for testing my pens on. <laughs> I don't think I've ever used it for anything other than that. Pencil once more. I used to say I couldn't draw a face, but practice makes progress. That's my big thing. 
And if that's the only thing you take away from today, practice makes progress. I have been practicing drawing faces and I'm, I would still say I'm practicing drawing faces. So, um, you know, don't say you can't do it. Just, just try again because the next one will be much better than your first one. Okay, so if you want to put in the shading again, you can, but just by putting in those lines. There we go. So, you know, you can copy one out of a magazine. You can draw your own. So I'd love, love, love to see if um, anyone has a, has a go at drawing their own um, person. And again, as much or as little as you want, you know, if I wanted to put... And I add a little bit of colour into our cheeks. I certainly could. She really liked that. It's really pretty. Oops. Her lips too. Um, the other thing is for, particularly for shades of faces is um, watch makeup tutorials um, for knowing about lights and shadows. So particularly ones that do with contouring. I know that they look ridiculous when they first put their contouring, but those people are magicians with um, where the shadows and highlights lie on a face. And once I started watching those, it made shadowing faces make so much um depth and difference to the page so um I'd, I'd certainly go and check that out um as well so that's it <laughs> we've done a lot in in two and a bit hours um does anyone have any questions before we go um thank you so much for joining me and to all those people hopefully who um, watch this later on thank you so much for watching you are so welcome. Thank you so much, Jen, for being such a great supporter as well. Go check out Jen's amazing shop. She has got all the cool stuff as well and um, has got a new virtual retreat coming up too. So, yeah, and just a reminder again, um, if anything I used today took your fancy, um, you can go and use Natalie's um, amazing discount code. Please, you know, say where you, you know, came from. Um, she, she would really appreciate that too. You are all very, very welcome. I will probably do another free class um, in December for Christmas for the end of the year. Not sure if I'll get another one in between there. Um, for those of you who don't know, I've changed jobs. I'm now a high school teacher, uh, which I'm loving, but it's keeping me very, very busy because it's just a whole new world to get my head around. So... Unfortunately, this year, I don't think I'm going to get to um, do any more online classes apart from occasional ones like this. So, um, but if you did enjoy this class, certainly go and check out um, at Bev's Cross Crafts. If you look at online classes, I've got seven online classes there that you can access. We've got our own private Facebook group. You've got access to all the videos, all the files. Um, they're lots of fun to do, lots of different um, styles and um, techniques and so on. Um, I'm the quality teaching coach so I mostly based with literacy um, across seven to ten so doing um, teaching reading comprehension making sure everyone's doing what they're supposed to do with literacy both students and teachers doing professional development with teachers as well too thank you so much I would love it if you have done something or do something afterwards please pop it into the um, Mixed Media Creative Queens group. Remember the files that I had are in that group as well. And um, thank you so much. Enjoy. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all again in the future. Bye for now.